And good evening, my name is Adria Coulomé and today I will, I will present our work on external force estimation during compliant robot manipulation, which I did together with Diego Pardos, Guillem Alanyà and Carme Torres at the Institute de Robotica and Informatica Industrial in Barcelona. Our motivation for this work came from force censoring in robotics. We wanted to have a force feedback while, while moving our robot and to that purpose, there's a large variety of force sensors in the market available. However, um, we questioned how precise should a force sensor be in the sense that uh, we sometimes use expensive and high quality sensors that give us very accurate signals, uh, but we really don't need such uh, accuracy on our tasks. For these reasons, uh, we thought, can we make a sensorless force sensing? And the answer was yes. Uh, so, like for example, in this video, we have a robot performing a trajectory, and someone is pushing and pulling it in different directions. And with the, with the work we did, we managed to have a, a feedback of the force exerted on the robot, as you will see now. So the robot starts moving, and then we move it through the X Z direction. We, then we push it through the y direction and then we pull it on the x direction. As you can see in the in the plot, the road feels the forces that we apply on the on it. And to do so, uh, we started uh, with the typical control scheme. Then we filtered the signals in order to remove high frequency noise, and then we computed an inverse dynamic model. That is to compute the torques uh, of the robot. Uh, robot's dynamic equation for our given robot state. Then we also built a state observer, which is a less noisy estimation of the state of the robot that can be used together with the inverse dynamic model to have the force estimation that we want. Now, uh, now we will explain uh, how we did this uh, part by part. We will start with the inverse dynamic model then we, we explain the state and force estimation to show them some experimentation and conclusions. So, talking about inverse dynamic model, uh, we are talking about modeling uh, some forces of the robot uh, depending on its state. This is the dynamic, the dynamic equation of the robot where we have, uh, for example, the inertia matrix, the gravity terms, and the controller we apply on the robot. These terms are easy to obtain or to calculate. Uh, but on the other hand, we have, for example, the Coriolis and centripetal forces or the frictions, which are much more hard to model. Uh, in addition, we have an external perturbation, which is external forces uh, exerted on the robot. And also, we, we must note here that if we try to use this equation, uh, where, acceler where acceleration is usually obtained by differentiating position twice, uh, we have this, that acceleration uh, is very can be very noisy, so it is better not to use it. And when creating this inverse dynamic model, what we do is to perform uh, several trajectories uh, in the absence of external actions, and then we store that data, all the data we can read. Uh, and then we we'll learn uh, the torques measured uh, depending on the state uh, with, for example, uh, well, with different approximation models, which can be the uh, locally weighted projection regression, Gaussian processes, or can be or any other. And uh, keeping in mind that we must avoid the use of accelerations, what we did was to learn this function n here which is a combination of the computed torque, the inertia, and the desired acceleration. We use, we use this desired acceleration because it's noise-free. And so, having computed this model, uh, we switch to the state observer and force estimation. Uh, we based our work on this article from Li Wenpeng, uh, which uh, mainly converts uh, a dynamic system a dynamic system equation into this form and then uh, well uh, we can see here that x is the position and velocity term we have an external action and all the nonlinear terms are gathered in this uh, in this gamma so 
with this equation we can build a state observer which has a state estimation, a force estimation, the, the error compensation, compensation and the other terms estimation. Now, if there are some transformations which you can do it in the full paper, we obtain this expression for the force estimation. You have the inertia, the acceleration estimation, the velocity estimation error, the inverse dynamic model, and the controller action. And we have that uh, uh, the, the force estimation error uh, tends asymptotically to the dynamic model error only if uh, this matrix here is positive definite but this matrix here is uh, all the parameters are defined by the user so it is quite easy to to make it converge so we finally got our force estimation and to test its behavior uh, we used a Barrett hole arm manipulator which is a seven degree of freedom redundant arm and we used the computed torque control uh, controller which is a compliant controller in the sense that it, uh, it is not very stiff and uses the dynamic model and uh, inertia and acceleration we, together with a small PD controller in order to compensate errors. And uh, what we obtained was, for example, what we can see here. In this video, this robot approaches this basket and picks it up and then we put two cans of soda inside the basket. The robot feels the force of the basket when it picks it up and then it feels the force exerted against it when we put two scans in it. So you can see there's a peak and then stabilizes the signal and the uh, X and Y forces tend to zero. At the end there's a small oscillation because we blocked the controller. So, uh, so as you can see there was a slight error on the estimation and this error is caused by uh, the dynamic model error we have. This can come from the function, function approximation, uh, some signal noise, and, over, uh, and mainly it comes from friction. And this friction can come from the motor plugging, which is the, related to the position of the motor magnets, and uh, static or dynamic friction hysteresis. However, overall, we have an error uh, which is less than 10% of the total joint torques without properly modeling the friction and computationally very, very cheap. So as a conclusion, uh, we provided an external force estimator which is simple to implement, it has convergence guarantees and can be run online parallel to any controller and in addition it does not uh, require many additional computational computations on certain controllers so sometimes it is free to compute it doesn't use real accelerations which avoid uh, having very noise and it makes no assumption on, on external forces model because there's a lot of work which uh, considers the external forces that have a certain model and tries to model it in addition, uh, it can detect forces which are not applied on the end effector. That's, that is an advantage uh, against the force sensors because we can have a force estimation of the, uh, the force exerted, for example, on the elbow of the robot and not only on the end effector, which is what the force sensors do. As a future work, we want to model uh, the frictions uh, better in order to have a, a smaller error. So with this I end my presentation, thank you very much for your attention.